Hello gamers, I am Mike the Zorch, and this is a Inside Star Season edition of Zorch Reacts. And today we are reacting, or I am reacting to Expanse Glance. Now, we know what The Expanse is. The Expanse is a great sci-fi series. Um, had a rough start, sort of a yeah, somewhat iffy start beginning out in the first season and started getting better and it's gone off in a completely different direction since then, but it's still popular. It's over there on Amazon now. But uh, th this is not about that expanse. This is uh, something else. Anyway, let's get into the video and see what this is all about. Because I've not watched this episode yet. Hey everybody, in our last episode of The Quarter, we wanted to mix things up and take a sneak peek ahead at something coming your way while we're out on hiatus. It's the next concept ship from industrial powerhouse MISC and the first dedicated refinery craft of its kind. Let's mm. take a look. We've got quite a few ships already in the MISC manufacturer lineup. You have the Prospector, you have the Starfarer, mm -hmm. whole series, but we wanted to have dedicated entry level ship into the refining gameplay career for ship owners i knew they were going to have a refinery ship i knew they were going to have one because they said some time ago that they were going to have a refinery ship and now they are the misc expanse fills a, a great uh hole in the the gameplay loop of the the entire mining refining cycle because currently you, you go out to the far reaches of space, you mine some rocks, you fill up your capacity, then you yourself have to trek all the way back to a grain station or somewhere like that mm -hmm. to refine. And then you trek all the way back to go continue mining. Whereas the Expanse can be the middleman Ooh. where you take on board mined goods, you process it, and then you can either sell it yourself or you can transfer it back to a, a cargo ship and they complete the whole gameplay loop already then the expanse is oh the loop there's the saddlebags see here these are the saddlebags that are from the uh, the prospector so those are supposed to be ejectable from the prospector and replaceable so this can carry those saddlebags, these containers that are used to hold the ore, and then it uh, does all the refining right there on the ship. You don't have to go back to a space station to do all the refining. That is cool. That is very cool. This is this ship's going to become extremely important in the gameplay for um. Star Citizen coming along because the really small ships, like I have a Pisces and I can fly a really long distance with it, but you're not supposed to be able to. The tiny ships are not supposed to be able to fly all the way across the Stanton system because it's, it's a big star system. You have to actually make a lot of stops in order to refuel to make it across the system. And only the big ships, the really big ships, can make those long hauls. And it's going to be worse for Pyro, because Pyro is a much bigger star system. Um, because of the scaling, of the way that the game is scaled, the size of planets and, and the ships and everything, Stanton is about the size of the orbit of Mercury. So everything is a lot smaller. Um, Based on that, Crusader is the size of the Earth. And I think Hurston is about the size of Earth's moon. But because of the scaling, it's big to us, to the players and, and our, our ships. Pyro is going to be huge. Pyro is supposedly three to four times as big. And that's the reason why they had to put in 64-bit addressability in the game why they took so much time to program that into the engine to get that to work because they need that 64-bit memory addressability 
to keep track of everything in a space that vast. That's exactly why they needed it. All right, let's get back to this. The Expanse is the, the starter ship in the sort of refinery tier. We, we have refineries on other ships, such as the Starfarer, um, but they are, they are more specialized into... Ah, so the Starfarer does have a refinery. It does have a refinery on it. Okay, I have to correct Tiger on that. I'm purely doing fuel. Where the, the Expanse uh, has a, a bonus over there is it has what we call reactors on them, and at a very simplistic level, one reactor is one refinery process, and the Expanse has six of them on board. So it allows you to potentially do six entirely different refinery processes simultaneously or for maximum output you mm. do six of all the same type and really sort of improve wow. your bandwidth so to speak of refinery we picked misc because it uh it sort of fits that industrial aesthetic you've got the rounded front nose it definitely the has but the then what you'll look. Notice, you've got the math well not massive but you've got the big shoulders um and that's also on staff era and so we wanted to keep that mm -hmm. so it's sort of basically big airflow big intakes straight into an engine and then back out when people look at the back there are um, there are certain visual elements there that you'll see that are common throughout the, the ship manufacturers you know it's a sort of the ball engine almost a very sort of defined fins that uh, surround the, that spherical engine yeah you see that and also the other sort of main feature is the eight pods the four on either side it really gives this ship a, a unique look and silhouette I mean, there's no you know there's no mistake in yeah, the, the ship. same saddlebags that are on the uh prospector people might be familiar already with sort of um misc interiors are generally sort of sort of a letterbox uh, kind of viewpoint you know it's sort of it's very wide screen um you, you know you've got that basically when you're sat in the pilot seat uh, you've got all your instrumentation laid out in front of you. It's all quite sleek, holographic. It's still sort of quite compact because it this is a ship are usually not known for their visibility. Leading from the cockpit, um, it will take you into just a small living section. Um, you know, so bed, locker, that kind of you know that kind of stuff. Um, and then progressing to the rear of the ship is just a, a really small sort of like. Um, operations room basically where you can um, interface with the refinery section and there's a little hmm. window there and you can sort of see through into the gubbins and you'll have a, a little bit of a display that you'll be able to do some of your interaction with hmm. it's split level so uh, to get to get out of the ship basically you'll enter into a, a really sort of compact and bijou lift um, or an elevator, uh, as some people say. Um, that will take you down uh, to the lower floor. Jared, you might want to call it the ground floor. Um, and then uh, and then our outside uh, down a ramp, basically. So, um, yeah, quite quite small. I mean, well, I think the ship is going to be ship. kind of cool. I mean, obviously, it's a, you know, it's a niche role, and it's not going to appeal to every player, but I think... Um, as a ship and as an owner, it's um, going to have an important really, role really because of Pyro. Like I think they're probably going to sort of, you know, really start to gel with it. Um, it's got a lot of, you know, it's got a lot of personality, I would say. Um, and, you know, I hope that, you know, people, yeah, A, will enjoy what it does, but B, all, you know, will also sort of enjoy the visuals of the ship and just flying around in it and just having having that sort of one-man support experience. The MISC Expanse is the first dedicated refinery ship for Star Citizen, an ideal place for beginners looking to start making their way in this career, intended partner of the Prospector Mining Vehicle, and mm -hmm. you can learn more about it in the coming weeks on the robertspaceindustries.com website. But up next... Which means that uh, they're going to have to have those cargo pods, the, what we call the saddlebags, detachable, uh, finally. They're supposed to detach from the um, prospector, and then I guess they would use a tractor beam 
on the expanse to pull them over and lock them into place and then pull the materials out and process them in their reactors on the expanse. And then they would put empty saddlebags into the prospector and the prospector would then fly out and uh, get some more ore. Get some more uh, probably uh, quantum ore or whatever they're whatever they are uh, refining. Whatever they're mining for. This is going to be a vital ship. I can tell you right now, this is going to be a vital ship for Pyro because of the need for a lot of quantum fuel. It's going to be an important ship. Very important ship. You're going to have a lot of orgs buying these up to um, go out mining, collect a lot of fuel, and refine it so that they can make those long hauls. I mean, think of the Odyssey. If you can put this ship in the Odyssey along with a prospector, not only can the Odyssey mine for its own quantum fuel, but then you would be able to then mine for other materials using the prospector and then refine those materials in the expanse, all without having to go back to a space station. Because that's what the um, oh, well, that's what the Odyssey was made for, was going out there in those long range missions. The only thing you would have to really take take with you in large amounts would be food, because you still have to eat. All right. Alpha three seventeen is right around the corner, so yeah. here's a look at three seventeen is going to be packed. It is going to be packed with stuff. I mean, if you watched the watched the last episode, not the one that we did this weekend, but the last episode before that, Many we were talking we were talking about Star Citizen. That update is packed with stuff. I mean, it is absolutely packed to the rafters with with things that that are coming. It's a huge update. New features, updates, and bug fixes on their way with the patch report. Okay, Let's so I guess they're... Let's start things off with the big mammer jammer, the main event, the headliner, ship-to-ship -ship player refueling. Ah. This new support profession makes its debut in the upcoming Alpha 317, with a new and exciting user interface allowing players to fuel up their Starfarer and Starfarer Geminis, head out into the verse, make an agreement for a type of fuel and price, hook up using the docking interface you may already be familiar with, and then don't forget to manage the flow properly, this step is the crucial difference between a satisfied customer and an unfortunate repair bill. Now, ship-to-ship -ship refueling arrives along with the rebalancing of fuel efficiencies and the removal of temporary fuel scoops from many spacecraft to change life in the verse from this point forward. But Disco, that's not the biggest feature in Alpha 317, you may be saying. <laughs> Who are you, my boss? Name is Disco Lando. Just saying. I'm talking about my boss. Maybe the biggest feature of Alpha 317 is the dynamite combination of loot generation updates and selling, where a wide array of new items, some formerly found in shops, some. Oh, oh, um, an update on that. I was incorrect about the color coding. I was incorrect about the color coding of the rare items. So they're not, they are not doing that. But they're still having the, um, the really rare stuff in the boxes that you can loot in uh, various locations with FPS missions. And um, they are going to be removing a few things from shops that weren't supposed to be there, like, um, armor suits that were used that are used by security personnel really weren't supposed to be in those shops so you will be able to find them in those boxes now things like that from the depths of star citizens history and some entirely brand new to the persisting universe can now be discovered during your travels and then along with a huge select persisting universe <laughs> that, that, that's one of those toy guns you can buy those little rubber bullets <laughs> Those are actually in the game. You can actually get those. Can now be discovered during your travels and then, along with a huge selection of items and resources you're already familiar with, now successfully be sold to vendors, allowing you finally to find your fates and fortunes 
while foraging the fantastic mm -hmm. fabled frontiers of favor and finance. <laughs> I'm gonna get fired. <laughs> or maybe the biggest news of Alpha 317 is the first integration of Quantum running things under the hood. Where the price oh, of is a commodities big freaking deal will now be controlled by the massive simulation bunderkin we've been talking about for some time. This is new. Vehicle maintenance services. This is a new screen. This is building blocks. Repair, restock, refuel quantum, refuel hydrogen. Oh, this is new. All righty then. Time. It's exciting times ahead. Yeah. Quantum is literally a quantum leap for this game. There is literally nothing currently out there that has a background simulation system that is that complex, that advanced, and also dictates how AI will behave. There's nothing, absolutely nothing out there that it compares to. Nothing. Also in Alpha 317 are a host of new additions and updates for medical gameplay, including the arrival of Maria Pure of Heart in Lorville, Okay. New space station clinic variations on stations throughout the Stanton system. Hmm. Okay. And balance adjustments and bug fixes to bleeding out, instant death. Hmm. Injury occurrence. Player status not persisting through logging. <laughs> yep, you can't log out and log back in to hunger get rid of your hunger rates. and thirst. And getting a crime stat for ramming your corpse. Ah. Yes, you may now ram your corpse as often as you like, <laughs> penalty free. <laughs> We've also got DNA head updates to your player faces that will look better than ever before with improved textures and, you guessed it, moist eyeballs. Moist eyes. <laughs> There's also the FPS weapon animation refactor where the Oh, there's the other thing. People have been describing this as the, the way the guns act in this as um, Escape from Tarkov. They've been acting like weapons from Escape from Tarkov, and and he sh you didn't know what that game is. That is a realistic um, military shooter that is built into Unity Engine. You wouldn't know it looking at it. You would think it was an Unreal Engine game because of how good it looks and how realistic it is and how good the sound is. But uh, Escape from Tarkov is like an amazing looking sounding game and it's a Unity game. I mean, it looked like something that was built with Unreal Engine, but it's not. But uh, people love the game, the gunplay in um, Escape from Tarkov. And so they're bringing gunplay similar to that to Star Citizen. Procedural animations that occur as you run, jump, idle, or just look badass while using the latest from Castec Arms should now feel more natural and aesthetically pleasing. New turret acceleration models so they don't instantly jump to max speed and give the player whiplash anymore. IFCS I'd, I'd quality have to try that. changes, fixes to cluster missiles, round vehicle oh. signature emission changes, and more that you okay, learn all that's... about when the patch notes come out. Oh. That's nice. Oh, that's very Macross. Mining gadgets, the latest improvement to mining gameplay that allows players to tackle those asteroids that were previously a bit too volatile or change a variety of circumstances to better suit your loadout and intent when out in the cold wastes, just you and your big rocks. <laughs> Cloud Tech also takes another step forward on Hurston as the planet is next in line to get a little bit of shade from the sun in the Stanton system. Oh, this is going to be awesome looking. 
Alpha 317 also brings with it the long-awaited Hull A from Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern, oh, yeah. Harbinger of the entire Hull series and littlest workhorse of the line. It, now, I'm supposed to espouse all of its virtues here, but really, just look how adorable it is. <laughs> I just, I just want to give it a little hug and tell it what a good job it's doing. <laughs> Note, if I didn't just talk about how adorable it is and wanting to hug it, someone made me re-record this. <laughs> and when you're done flying your Hull A low above Microtech's first river and test bed for the new river tech that will roll out across planets and moons and subsequent patches, oh, cool. you can return to port with the biggest feature of Alpha 317 yet, bind to key ATC landing. Oh. <laughs> Look at it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> so what did we learn this week? Yes. Well, we learned that Mist continues to be at the industrial <laughs> forefront with the Expanse <laughs> Refinery Vehicle, and that the full concept reveal is just around the corner. That little things like ATC Bind a Key are the quality of life improvements that come through your feedback throughout all of development. Mm -hmm. And that with ship to ship refueling, vendor selling and quantum under the hood, Alpha 317 is shaping up to be another big step forward in recognizing the full potential of life in the verse. Now that's it for ISC this quarter, but keep an eye out on the robertspaceindustries.com website for info on the 317 release, the upcoming Miss Expanse, as well as our merch sale, it's just around the corner. And then hang out with Jeremiah and I one more time right here in LA tomorrow on Twitch ahead of my eventual relocation to the UK. Uh, so he's Star finally Citizen. moving. I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next month from there, here, wherever. Alrighty then. <laughs> okay. That's the old set. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, that was loud. I like my colors. I like my colors. Whew. I'm almost missed my chair. Have you ever found a critical JIRA assigned to an employee that hasn't worked there for years? Had you ever shown up for a stand-up that no one told you had been canceled? Have you ever had everything working perfectly on staging, but wouldn't even boot up in the presentation room? What kind of games did you invent as a kid? Have you ever shown up to a stand-up and you were the only one there? Have you ever gotten lost in a gaming convention? Have you ever clicked send halfway through with... I forgot what I was supposed to say here. <laughs> Have you ever lit a scene only to discover you're 300% over the entity budget? Ah. Have you ever killed a man in the dead of winter just to watch the steam rise from his wounds? <laughs> Have you ever been tempted to set all your Jiras to resolve and just make a run for it? Nope, that's not good. I don't remember the last time I stood up for a stand-up. You tell us it's going to be a good start. I got a trophy for spaceships. <laughs> I gave it to myself. I'm going to have to get a haircut at some point. I'm just wasting camera time now. Huh? You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? They gave me a special fashion hoodie. Sometimes I just stick my fingers under my arms oh the weather outside is weather honestly i'm just getting really bad at this have you ever found four copies of the same confluence page and had no idea which was the updated one did you know the human head weighs just 14 pounds just mine <laughs> it's been a long road <laughs> i'd never done a crazy thing in my life before that night do you have a jira for that <laughs> All right. So I like that chip, the uh the the expanse. I like that they gave it that name. It's definite that has to be an ode to the show. But that's going to be a vital, vital ship to this game because 
as I said, uh, they they have rebalanced how the how fuel is used. So ships aren't supposed to be making these long trips across the system, especially the tiny ones like the uh, Pisces. They're not supposed to make such long trips in just a couple of jumps. They they're supposed to have to make several jumps. So. I might not be able to make the trips that I usually do in the Pisces or the um or even in um some of my other smaller ships. I may have to actually hitch a ride on a larger one, like Tigris Carrick, to make those long journeys. And all those new additions coming to uh, 317. Yeah, those are big, especially Quantum. Quantum is the biggest. Of course, I do like the ATC button. That uh, That's good, because calling ATC was always a hassle in the game. Always a hassle. Anyway, that was Inside Star Citizen for this week. And uh, I guess they're, they're doing one more. No, no, wait a minute. No, I, no not one more. Uh... Yeah, that's correct. They probably won't have one next week because Jared's moving. He's moving to um, London to uh, be with the dev team there because uh, they're moving everything there to to get everything uh, done for Squadron 42. Squadron 42 is their top priority right now to, to get that out. But they need to get that game out. Because one, they need to prove that they can actually get a game out and get a good game out. But also, um, having that game launched will give them a revenue stream other than strip sales. Anyway, um, this has been this latest one. And this might be the last one for a little while before they start releasing these again. So I have to find some other videos to react to. <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, please sub consider subscribing. Click the bell icon so you get notifications of any new videos that get uploaded to the channel. And I have been Mike the Zort. This has been Inside Star Citizen. And until next time, I'll see you then.